Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Creates, my other channel, my second channel to my embroidery channel. And this is the place where I have a little bit of a play and I do something a little bit different to what's on the embroidery channel. And I try some different techniques out and um, splash some paint around and stuff like that. So I've got a really fun one to show you today. I'll show you the cover in a second. Um, this is a project I did when I was on my apprenticeship. And I just had a little, little, little look through it and it's quite exciting. I've forgotten about it and there's some real potential in there. So I'm excited to show you this and then I'll show you what I made from it. If I can extract it from under Ginger Cat because he's decided it's quite comfortable. <laughs> so I'll pull that out and then I will have a look at that too. So when I did my embroidery apprenticeship with the Royal School of Needlework, we did art for one day a week. And we had a lovely lady called Anne come in and teach us um, art and drawing and different projects and design projects and she would set us a project every term and we would have to work towards that project and there'd be an end goal and we had to hand it in and that was to set as part of our training so it's really good if you're going to do embroidery to have some sort of um art knowledge as well or maybe try and teach yourself some art knowledge you don't have to have art knowledge but i think if you do a little bit of drawing and a bit of painting and a little bit of messing around with textiles and paints and materials it's going to enhance your embroidery no end because you can suddenly do a lot more with it so i'm going to show you this book this is what it looks like big so this is not very inspiringly named water project um and this is one of the projects that we did in that art class that we did as part of our apprenticeship so i'm going to take you through it some really good stuff in there talk a little bit about what these are on the back wall as well so let's just get that under the overhead camera so you got ginger cat's nose in the way but i think we're all right i think we can see it so this is the cover um and i've cut some ways out so this is acrylic painted onto a sheet of paper and there's a sample of that in the back of the book so i'll show you that um, and I've just cut some wave shapes out of it and made the cover out of it. Now I have to say at this point that we had art for one day. I think it was every week during our sort of term time. And in between terms, we'd go down into the studio and we'd work in the studio and we didn't do art then. So it was very much a bit, very much sort of squashing it in between the embroidery projects, which I always sort of resented a little bit, but we only had so much time and the embroidery was really the thing that took priority. If we didn't hand embroidery projects in on time, we lost half the marks just by not handing it in on time. So it was important we did the stitching. So the art took a little bit of a back seat and I didn't spend as long on some of these things as I would have really liked to, especially being where we were at Hampton Court. So much inspiration everywhere and beautiful parks around in the river and the palace, obviously. Um, there was a lot of places to get inspiration. So I sort of a bit of a regret that you didn't have more time to spend on this side of it. But I looked through this, there's actually quite a lot in here. Um, but just bear the, the time scales in mind when you see this. Everything's quite big and bold and quick and fast, which is quite how I like to work it when I'm doing my art anyway. So I don't know if that's come from this. So let's open it and have a look. So this was the brief that we would get at the beginning of the project. So I'll just read it out briefly. Uh, this, by the way, is 2005. So this would be the second year of my apprenticeship, started in 2003. Um, summer term, May to June, to improve aims to improve observational drawing and painting skills, to translate images of water into textile and embroidery techniques, to gain awareness of stylization and symbolism of water in historical and world textiles. Objectives to produce drawn and painted sketches and photos of water from observation, to produce experimental paper and fabric samples of water effects. That bit's coming up, that bit good. To design a small textile piece based on the above studies one that ginger cats asleep on currently, to complete a section of the design show enough to show the intended effect, to compile a reference collection of examples of work by artists and designers depicting water annotated appropriately and to present all work simply and appropriately. And then talks a little bit about the assessment deadline, 2pm. Very precise in bold, cap bold letters and timetable amendments. So we had to sort of get all this work in. I don't know how carefully it was kind of marked as part of the of, of the apprenticeship but I did enjoy these sessions very much and it was nice to experiment and play a bit the embroidery part of the course was very intense and very exact and don't get anything messy and keep everything neat and tidy and this was a chance to go a little bit crazy and have some fun um we'll talk about what this is in a minute now it does say on there, I've just read, everything should be annotated appropriately. And I've got stuff here stuck in here and I don't know where it's from. So if you ever do use inspiration for something, then note where it's come from. Make sure you're not copying it. Um, 
but just for reference if you want to go back because these little pictures are wonderful um little fish in this kind of sort of drawn background i think that's absolutely fabulous and there's some other patterns here so i've just sort of taken some stuff out some books at this stage i did find treasury of chinese design and motifs it may have come from there and there is some wonderful wave sort of patterns to be inspired by in these kind of designs so you can look to other cultures definitely for this and just put water inspiration so it was all it's not sort of mounted very beautifully there's a, a massive amount of work in that um that art and design um project what's that called objectives and the aims yeah water project it's just called water project so in that brief that we got you could work for a year on that and, and not do half the things and we didn't have anywhere near that amount of time so it was all thrown together a little bit but i've got a really interesting little bit from the bay of tapestry down here lines of stitching depicting the sea so you can look at textiles you can look at paintings and other artworks see how people depicted sea and you just very simple lines but it's most definitely the boats are on the water water there so that's probably one of the most famous depictions and then yeah i've got some of these images they're great works of japanese graphic art ah that's where it came from so i have made a note of it don't know where i got that book from if i've got that book still or not but yes yeah, a wonderful stylized representations of water that you could certainly use in embroideries you've got to think how do i get actual water and how do i make it um, easy to stitch or easy to paint so you've got to stylize it somewhere along the way so make it look more of a pattern so there's some good examples obviously lots of waves here on these oriental embroideries and these um, semi-formal court coat it says there but look at all these wave patterns on the bottom absolutely fabulous and then there's some black and white um, prints with some waves just to see what actual waves do. I think if you can always go back to the source, back to the original thing and look at that, don't go off what somebody else, how somebody else has interpreted it. You go back and have a look at what does the actual thing look like and then interpret it from there. I think that's always a good, bit of good advice there. So photographs in, remember those days when we used to have actual photographs, <laughs> real printed paper photograph. So we went down to Brighton which is a um, little seaside town, south coast of Britain. Really trendy, fabulous, lively, vibrant place. It's got a brilliant beach there, a pebble beach, that's to be said. Um, and we went down there and we went to the Brighton Pavilion and we went in there and we did some drawing in there until we got told off. So don't you can't draw in here. So that was the end of that. So we bought the guidebook, I think. And then we went down to the beach. So I've taken some pictures of the sea. And when you take a photograph of it you actually sort of freeze it in a moment of time because obviously the sea is always moving um, but when you take a photo it freezes it still so you can see what it's actually doing what are the shapes doing what are the colors doing what are the textures doing if you're going to convert it into embroidery how do i create that texture of the water so there was some of the sea and i've got some of the beach which got some amazing patterns in it That was Brighton Pier. It's got two piers in Brighton. One of them you can go on and is all fixed. The other one, I think, is probably all fallen into the water by now. Catches fire quite a lot for some reason. Pebbles. Look at the colours in the pebbles. The sand. Some brilliant colours in here. A seagull. So a few reference photographs. Obviously, if we did it now, we'd have hundreds on our phones. Uh, Brighton Festival. So um, their image on the front of their brochure for their festival is sort of got these deck chairs all in the water and the patterns are on the deck chairs. So a little bit of inspiration there. And then we had a little play with some fabric. So this is where it gets fun. So um, I had to have a look through this and remember how to do this because I this is the only time I've used this method. But luckily I wrote some really good notes. So I know what I did. So we used some transfer dyes. So you paint onto the paper, I've got it here actually, not even made some notes, paint onto the paper, iron onto a poly cotton or synthetic fabric. Most of these things when you iron something onto the fabric is better if there's some synthetic quality to the fabric. So pure sort of cottons and linens don't work so well. Um, better if there's a bit of 
a bit of um, something synthetic in it. So poly cotton's got a bit of cotton and a bit of synthetic. Um, colours come out much brighter. So these um, are the colours that we used of the transfer dyes, colour sample sheet, mid yellow, golden yellow, vivid violet, Lincoln green, the famous colour in Lincoln, Lincoln green, aqua turquoise, royal blue, navy. And they look a little bit similar, some of these. And then when you do them on the fabric, oops, that way, you can see, I mean, look at that golden yellow. That's the golden yellow. Completely different. Lincoln green, navy. Look at that, a lot brighter and lighter. Royal blue, turquoise and the violet. It's completely different. So when you put your fabric on top of this and you iron it, the dyes come off onto the fabric. And you get those colours. So that was my little sample of what they did. And then here's some C sort of theme samples. I'll go through these a little bit quicker. Samples of painted paper and iron fabric transfer dye technique inspired by water. Quite clearly says what it is. So these are my little bits of fabrics. So if we just jump to the paper bits. So you paint your design on the paper. You can put a resist underneath. You can get like a white crayon and draw the C shapes. And then when you put the paint on top, it doesn't go on the white crayon. Then you turn that over onto your fabric. And then you iron onto the fabric and it transfers onto there. So you can do some really exciting effects with it. These are just some different experiments I've done. And this is just copy of paper, just normal white paper. Splash a bit of water on it so you can move the dye around, get what you want on the paper, and then you can transfer it onto the fabric. That's sort of dropping it on and letting it run, splattering it a little bit. And these are the sort of mad, crazy things that happen with <laughs> when you iron it onto the fabric. But look at the colours. Absolutely stunning colours. It's got a bit creased just because it's creased in the folder. A bit strange. I don't know if I've melted the fabric when <laughs> I've ironed it, but that's been quite exciting. Look at that one. That's got salt on it, so put some salt crystals on it. That soaks up the water out of the dye and leaves these patterns. And then when you iron it, you get those on the fabric. Wow. Well, well, ah, right. This one is that first one. Look at the colour difference because you can just see these lines throughout here. It's a bit of a sort of see-through fabric. This is quite nice. Um, you want to layer something, especially with kind of water effects. Obviously, things would be going on underneath. Oh, that is spotty one, which is like the one that's on the inside of the cover. That one's actually pinned to it. Transfer dyes, lines of blue dyes. So I've just done different lines in a few of the blue colours I think here and that's what happens when you transfer it onto the fabric so it can give you a really interesting background and when I did this I never heard of slow stitch I'm not even sure it was a thing <laughs> back then a thing embroidery technique back then um, but these pieces would be wonderful for slow stitching and kind of tempted to take them out of here actually and put them in my slow stitching stash and see if we couldn't develop this a bit further. did this project a long time ago and I'd forgotten about it to be honest until I was looking on my shelf but maybe it would be great to bring these out and play with them see what we could do now with the knowledge that I've got now that I didn't have then. So this is one done with some different colours now. It's gone off the sea theme. I don't know why I wrote in silver. <laughs> I can't see it. So transfer dyes blotted with tissue. So put the dyes on the paper, blotted it with tissue, and then when I've ironed it on the fabric, that's what I've got. Now this one started like this. I've been that way around. I wanted to surprise you with that one, but transfer dyes scrunched up paper. So scrunched up this paper, copy of paper, painted it with aqua turquoise. So it's sort of where it's got the creases in it that the the dyes um transferred onto the paper differently where the creases are and then when I ironed it onto this quite horrible fabric look at that oops so let me show you both together there we go you would not think that was going to turn into that but look how beautiful that is absolutely stunning I don't know how I should get that effect the fabric is really horrid it's um I don't know what it is completely synthetic But the, the pattern that's come out is beautiful. Really, really beautiful. I don't know what that would be like to stitch on. Very dense, but that is just gorgeous. 
I believe how well that came out. So if you experiment, you never know what you might get. You might get a hundred really awful things, but you might get one really amazing thing. Transfer crayons and dies. So these are the transfer crayons here. Crayola make a set of these fabric ones. Draw on your paper, turn it over, iron it, appears on your on your fabric. Don't forget that it will appear in reverse if you're doing anything that that might be important for. So transfer cranes underneath, Procyon dies just dropped and splattered on the top and that's how it came out. And another one here. Splashed water on the paper, added the dies over the water and let it run around the page. So water first, then the dies, which dilutes the dies down a little bit, let it run around and then printed it. It came out like that and I seem to have done a little bit of silver leaf on top of that. I don't know what I put on there to stick that to. Just to add some extra details. Right, batik samples. So batik, if you don't know, is kind of like a wax. It's a wax resist and you have it in this little instrument and it melts and once it's going you can't really stop it. When you see this done well, it's beautiful. Mine not so much. It's very hard to do this really neatly. If you look on YouTube and you see some videos how to do this, it'll be like, oh wow. Well. Um, so it takes a bit of practice to get it neat, but you have it in this little sort of, I don't know what you call it. It's kind of like a pen that holds the wax, which is hot, and then you, you draw with it, basically. And you draw these patterns here. That dries, so it's like a candle wax. When it dries, it's all sort of stiff. Then you dye it in your dies and then you iron off to get the wax out when it's dry so that wax leaves these patterns and the dye soaks into the rest of the fabric but some really wave patterns and splashes painted with navy royal blue aqua turquoise dyes and then they iron out the wax on it it's quite stiff still i don't know if that would be suitable to stitch on you might have to keep ironing it and get more of that wax out i feel it's a bit waxy it's still got the wax in but the colors are incredible and it feels a bit more like a cotton, this one as well. So that's a bit nicer to actually sort of use. So that's what that is. Just a few more of these. Oh, I could put a pink at the edge. That could be nice, couldn't it? That sort of something happening down here, some fish on it, some slow stitch spirals. Awesome. The colours are just stunning. Oh, on an old tablecloth. Ah, that's what this is. That's why it's pretty sturdy. Wave shapes and splashes painted in strips with Procyon dyes. So again, wax first. Makes some really wonderful effects and some fabulous colours. It goes all the way through. Bear that in mind if you want to play with these. Um, and right, on that note, <laughs> so this is a piece of um, baking parchment and you put your fabric on top of that and then you iron on top of that because it does go through the fabric you're getting a right mess if you were doing this and you didn't use that but I just thought the paper was really interesting what was left is just really beautiful as a piece of paper and I guess if you put something over and ironed it again that might still come off I don't know but I thought that was really nice we just kept it in there that's the end of those samples and I just want to point to these so this is a piece of batik that I did in India. I did a couple of textile tours to India. Um, and this we did in Gujarat. You can see it. Um, again, not it's not brilliant. But it was a massive one. And then we dipped it in indigo and it's just really fabulous. And I remember that one being super, super hot. This little workshop we went to just oh, it was absolutely baking hot. So it was kind of do it as quick as you can. <laughs> so you can get out because it was so hot in there and you sit on the floor and we're not used to sitting on the floor so that was quite uncomfortable and I just want to show you this one which is not um, batik but it is a sort of a resist so this one um, we did in Rajasthan on the second tour there is a video on that I'll put a link to that up here if you want to see about that tour and what we got up to on that tour lots of exciting printing and textile stuff and then you print it in a resist and then you dye it and then you can see the little hand prints hopefully on that one and then where you print the resist it dies around it so a similar sort of theory to the batik but done with a resist and i can't remember what the resist was i seem to remember sand being involved 
you threw sand on it and then I can't remember particularly but it might be in that video so that's what they are on the background I just thought they're blue and we've got a bit of a blue thing <laughs> going on I thought you'd be interested to see that so sketching the brief said we needed to do some sketching these are really quick sketches and not my finest hour but we just we just didn't have the time to spend on it April 2005 pastoral studies of sunset in Bushy Park so I used to live on the other side of Bushy Park and I used to walk through Bushy Park on my way to Hampton Court Palace and there were these wonderful sunsets which I tried to capture here in pastel on and a light paper and a dark paper it be amazing to try and get home before the sun could set in Move you over a bit, buddy, because that's it. Um, this I didn't do in as part of the course. I did an evening course um, in printmaking at Richmond Adult Education College, I think. And um, so I did again that Bushy Park sunset. And this is a mono print. So you put all of the paint on the plate and you do your design, your pattern on the plate, and then you put it through the printing press and you get one print only out of it. Um, and that's what that was. That came out quite nicely. I think I did a few of those. We've got some pastel interpretations of the wave photographs. So those, those pictures I showed you at the beginning of the waves and I tried those in pastel on a blue paper. They come out quite nicely actually. If you just forget that it's the sea you think well it's really hard to paint but then you just literally look at what is there. What shape is it doing? Where is the texture? Where is the colour? Forget what it actually is and come out right those ones. Quite pleased with those. Waves in pastel yeah playing with some designs and some shapes. Running out of time at this point. <laughs> Boat reflections on the water and a big lot of something that's not part of it. So the reflection they do, if you look at the, what's going on in reflections, there's often some really incredible colours. Sky reflected in the water, water reflections copied from a photograph. And the long water at Hampton Court, you look out of the east front and there's this great big piece of water that stretches off into the distance and this was the sort of fence around the top part of that. Tree reflected in a water. If I'm ever famous when I'm long gone, then somebody will put that in a gallery. <laughs> Call it art. I think it's really terrible. So those are my little sketches. And then we had to use that inspiration and use those sketches to do the project. So this is my water project design. I'm quite amazed about how much project um, this project I actually got done, how much work I did. So again, this is this paper that was on the front cover and it's just... I think it's acrylic paint, it feels like acrylic paint, and I've just ripped it out for the cover, but I cut those wave shapes out of it. Don't waste anything. So, right, so these boats were down on the river, so Hampton Court is on the river, the River Mole, that's why it's in East Molesey. Is it the River Mole? The River Mole is in East Molesey, must be the Thames. So the River, the East, the River Mole comes into the Thames at Hampton Court. So this is the Thames on the River Mole. But the River Mole comes into the Thames and it all sort of meets there. So there's lots of boat things going on um, and lots of waterways and there's lots of houseboats as well on the river a bit further down. And these were right outside the palace on the bridge that you cross over to get to the palace. And these wonderful boats, and look at the reflections on these. I was really caught by those. I thought they were really wonderful. New Southern Bell, it's the boat that did go up and down. I presume it still does. This was the bridge. If you've been to Hampton Court and walked across this bridge, East Molesey is here and the River Mole comes down into here. So you can see you've got all these amazing reflections in the water. Really quite, if you sort of forget that the bridge is there. Really interesting composition. Canada geese. More reflections. Really interesting shape that the reflections make. So these were some of my design ideas. So I've got cormorant sitting on the end of the boat with some of these wave patterns. I don't know if you can see these clearly, they're very pale. Uh, deck chair from Brighton and the sea and some seagulls. The clique, the deck chair, bold and bright. So just playing with some ideas of how can I turn this into an embroidery. And this is my design idea. I love these boats that I've just shown you on the water and the reflections. And I just like the corner of it. And it was beautiful. One of those boats was just this bright red colour. I thought, oh, I really like that bright red. And just a bit of the wave patterns down the bottom. 
here in the boat on the top. So I've kind of zoomed into it. Bright coloured boat with water reflections. Not sure about the composition, I said. So another composition. So I moved the boat, moved the water reflections around the boat for a much more pleasing composition. So the water reflections were down here, which is quite interesting, but there's nothing connecting the boat and the water. And I've moved them up there and they're around the boat now. And then I coloured it in. I have a rough idea what I was going to do. Foil for the boat reflection, foil for the water reflections, fabric for the water. So some sort of material, interesting materials to play with there. And I did myself a little colour diagram. Stitch plan. I like a stitch plan. Boat. Stylized shape. Outline. Colours? Question mark. Cut out the shapes. Stitch with glittery threads. Iron on film. Ah, that might be what the silver is earlier. <laughs> Coming back to me now. There's a little bit of silver on one of those batiks. I think it's iron on film. And you can literally, um, yeah, this stuff, like foil, you can see it. That's what it is. Look. That's what it is. Right, okay, I can see that now. So it's special film that you can actually get to transfer that onto your fabric. So that's how I got that, which explains a few things. Water background effect, tie dye transfer dyes painted bond web. Layer with different fabrics, lines in similar colours to the background quilting. So I've sort of written my ideas out, formulating my ideas, and do it all before you try it. You know that I like sampling. If you watch my embroidery channel, I love sampling. But I do sort of like, if I'm doing a project, think through it a little bit. And you can do it as you go along, but I think if you just have a little bit of an idea of where you want to go, you're more likely to be successful. That's a copy of the actual thing. So I'll get to that. And then there's a few ideas of how to present it. So I cut it up. Quite like triptychs at one point. <laughs> cut everything up into threes. So the boat and the water and then a little bit less water. I quite like that, actually. That's a nice composition. Final design, actual size. I don't know why I made it this big. It's huge. And then there's a little, that's the last thing. So there's a little evaluation. I really enjoyed the water project. Especially with so much water around us in the form of the river, the mountains, the lake, the mountains. There's no mountains. Hampton Court. Mountains, lakes, ponds and streams enabling us to go out and complete a lot of sketching. A trip to Brighton Seaside was especially useful and I find quite challenging. To sketch something that's constantly on the moves is very difficult. Photographs came in useful for this point of view, so I mentioned that earlier. Found the pastel sketches interesting to do as I never used pastel before. Found I could work better with the soft pastels. Joy working towards a particular design. The jump from sketch to stitch is a, diff is a difficult one and will be a very important technique and skill for the future. Wanted to complete a stitch piece as I thought doing this in a day. In a day? Oh, do you know I did? I made this in a day. In my defence would be a real challenge after the very fine detailed stitching we were used to. <laughs> it's a real contrast to what we were doing with the rest of our week and I actually made this whole thing in a day. Managed to achieve this, was pleased with the result. If I had more time it would have done more detailed reflections. Enjoyed that, I enjoyed looking through it, I enjoyed doing the project, I'm enjoying the possibility of doing something else with all of that. Um, material and all those wonderful fabrics as well. So let's have a look at what I did in a day. <laughs> I've just got to extract it so I should be back as soon as I can get to cut off it. Right buddy, I know that you're really comfy but I need that piece. Oh no, don't get more comfy. Good boy, that's it. And that last little bit. different. Okay so that was an apprentice piece obviously I wouldn't let him sleep <laughs> sleep on it but it's a really nice textile. Oh I've noticed it's not there. Yeah. So this is what I made in a day. I've never made a quilt before either. So I'll just hold up to there and we'll look at it in more detail under the camera. So my red boat at the corner, my water reflections, sort of disappearing down so the kind of focal point is there it's nice to have something in your picture that is the center point of your design 
the main thing that the design is about go and look at that but then you sort of move around it and see what else is there and I don't know if you can see see it's sparkling and then I made it up into a quilt if you're a quilter don't look too closely at my <laughs> quilting skills they're not great I just made it up so let's have a little look under here and see what we've got so the red boat is being painted on a sort of feels like a piece of canvas it's quite thick that and I think I've probably just done that in acrylic paint and just painted it and then I've just quilted it in a couple of places just to make the sort of boat form and folded it under there and I've got some background fabrics that I have I think I've used the dyes on so maybe some of that paper because it's got colour to it I can't quite see how I've done that but here's this foil that I talked about and a bit of the silver there so that's definitely what the silver was about on that sample and there's a little bit of red here I'm not sure how you use that you'd have to look up if you were interested in those um, and then I've got layers of fabric here so just some of that see-through fabric it's got a, had a bit of that printing on it that we looked at earlier in the book and I've just sewn it down really crudely these stitches are huge look I can get get two fingers underneath those and I didn't know you know as I said didn't know about slow stitching at that point but it's kind of a form of slow stitching just create big stitches and making some texture and having some fun with the stitches not really worrying too much about the end result if we move down we've got these different layers so it's kind of getting a little bit darker I've got some darker stitches in the bottom so we've got the reflections of the boat up here so that sort of connects the boat into the water that brings us down into there and then the reflections die out and then we've just got these effects in the water and some mad crazy fabrics in here quite nice to layer these if you've got something that's really a bit like mm, but if you just put something on top of it so it sees through you can get some really wonderful effects i've used that a few times in different projects some more fabric here that i've just stitched down in various places so we've got little some holding stitches and kind of ruched it up a bit and then just put these great big stitches over the top for the reflections to create those patterns and then just finished it into this quilt just put this edge around and this backing on and it doesn't really do anything <laughs> it's not for anything it hasn't even got any hanging things on it but I think it's really fun to see in fact let me just show you my design so now you get from that to that from the actual source the actual um, real life inspiration in front of you primary source that's called so not using use the photographs for some of the sort of pattern inspiration but actually go to the, the river and the water and the sea and have a look and see what it does and start there and you can see this progression right from there right through to an end finished stitched piece and I think that's a really interesting process to to, to learn about and to have a go at and you can see we had a lot of fun playing with the fabrics we had a brief that we had to meet but you could just carry on playing if you want you don't have to make a finished thing out of it but you could set yourself a little project maybe and say right let's make a piece inspired by spring um, inspired by the sea inspired by trees whatever you want whatever interests you and just you know study them have a look close look at them see what's going on see what patterns and colors and textures are in there and then think how can i translate that into an actual stitched project so i hope you've enjoyed looking through my little water project book and finished piece i've enjoyed revisiting it actually and um quite inspired by some of the things in there and i think i might get some of those fabrics out and have a play so i hope you've enjoyed that do go and check out this video up here also on my create channel hopefully you'll really enjoy that we'll go and have a look thank you for watching everybody give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed watching it and then i will see you in another creates video